Hey guys, so today we're going to learn all about Docker. We're going to start off by giving a run through of what Docker is and why you might want to use it. And then we're going to give an example of containerizing an application using Docker. So first of all, what is Docker? Well, it's a tool for running applications in their own isolated environment. It has similar advantages to running your application inside a virtual machine. These advantages include that your app runs exactly the same no matter what environment it is, and it lets you sandbox projects to keep them separate from each other. This is useful if different projects use different versions. For example, if one of your projects uses Python version 2.7 and a different one uses version 3, then these projects will be kept separate. It makes it easy to get going with someone else's project, so you can clone someone's project and it will be able to install all of its dependencies independent from what's already on your machine. And it gives you these advantages without the overhead of running and managing a virtual machine. So how does all this work? Well, the code and environment are all wrapped inside a container, and a container is not as heavy as a full virtual machine. With a virtual machine, each machine gets its own full operating system, including the kernel. The kernel is the core of the operating system and controls the really low level stuff. And doing this is very resource he heavy on the host machine because the host machine could have multiple VMs and all of these will be running their own operating system. With a Docker, the container uses the kernel of the host machine, but everything on top of that is separate from the host machine. So it takes it a level up. And this means that they can start up in seconds. So taking a step back from that, um, with Docker, first of all, we have images, and an image is a template for the environment you want. It's a snapshot of the system at a particular time, and a container is an instance of an image that is running. So if we want to Dockerize our application, the first thing we have to do is create a Docker file which defines this image, and then we can run this image as a container. So let's try to dockerize our own project. If you don't have Docker installed already, you're going to want to head over to docker.com forward slash get started. Scroll down and download Docker for your machine. Once you're done that, we're ready to start creating our image. To do that, first of all, we're going to go to Docker Hub and see if there's any images that we can inherit from. So our project is a node project. So we want to search for a node image. As you can see, the top result here is the official node image. And if we go in here, we can see some useful instructions into how we use this. As you can see, we're going to be using, we're going to be defining what version we want. And this is really cool with Docker because if your host machine is using the newest node version, but your project requires an older node version like node six, then we can do this. So now we're ready to Dockerize our project. As you can see, this is a really simple node project using Express, which exposes port 8080 and has an endpoint. So from the terminal, if we start this application, we can see it's starting from our host machine and running on port 8080. In the browser, if we go to localhost 8080, we can see that hello world is printed to the screen. So this is all working, but we want to dockerize this project. So how do we do that? Well, the first thing we want to do is create our Docker file. So Docker file, it's important that we use an uppercase D. And we can see we have this file now. And inside this file is where we're going to define our image. So the first thing we need to do is get the image from Docker Hub like we saw. So we're going to say from node eight, and that's the version we want to use. If you wanted to use version six, you would do something like that. But we want to use eight for this. The next thing we're doing, going to do is create our app directory. So we're going to say work dear user src app. And this is just the working directory for our application inside the container. And once this is done, we're ready to copy over some files um, from this project and install our dev dependencies. So to do that, we're going to say copy package wildcard.json and we're copying from here from the root as the package json file is here and we just put this asterisk so that we're copying in the package lock and the package.json 
and then we want to run npm run install and once this is done we're ready to copy over all of the other source files from our project so to do that we're going to say copy dot dot and this is just saying copy for two dot which is going to be inside this working directory from dot which is just our directory here and once that is done we need to expose our port so we're going to say expose 8080 and the last thing we need to do is run a command npm start so this is a really simple docker file but we also want to create a docker ignore similar to a git ignore this just means that we won't be copying all of our depend all of our files all the time so to do that we're going to say touch dot docker ignore and inside this file we just want to put in node modules and we can save that so now that we've defined our docker image inside our docker file we're ready to build it and to build this we're going to use the command docker build dash t and then we have to give it an identifier and this is what dash t means it stands for tag and we're just going to give our identifier as the name of our application my app and then we use space and a dot and this dot just means that we're going to build from our current directory so as you can see we have an error here and this was just a mistake here we want to run npm install if we save that and run the same command again then we can see it's building our docker image So our Docker image was successfully built and we can verify that by running the command docker images. And we can see all of the Docker images that we created. So you can see here we have my app and the thing we passed into dash t is under the repository heading and we can see we can get our image ID here. So now that we've created our image, we're able to run this image inside a container. And to do that, we use the command docker run dash p and here we have to to map our ports so our host port is going to be mapped to the port inside our docker container and then we just have to pass in our tag which as you can see here is just my app if we pass that in and hit enter we can see that this is now running inside the docker container and if we go over to localhost port 8080 and hit run, then you can see it's running. But what happens if we make changes here to our code and instead of hello world, we say hello world new and hit save. If we stop our Docker container with control C and run it again and hit refresh, we can see that this doesn't get the updates, even though we think it should have. To be able to pick up these changes without rebuilding the image every time, we can mount our local directory as a volume inside the container. And volumes give a running container the ability to see files on a host machine's file system. So to do this, while using our run command, we're gonna say docker run dash v, and we're gonna give it the directory of our host machine where the project is so we can say users chris foster desktop and then my app and we need to map this to a directory inside the container so if you remember um the directory we said was our working directory was this so we can just copy this and paste it in and again we need to map our ports so we're mapping 8080 to 8080 and then we just want to give our tag again. So to do that, we're just going to say my app. If we hit run, you can see that again, our container is starting, running on port 8080. And if we refresh here, we can see that now we get the change. And if we stop it, and then we make changes. So if we say, eh, eh, and start it again, 
we can see that this will work straight away. So thanks for watching. This has been a Docker tutorial. If you have any questions, don't be afraid to ask. I'm actually just getting used to Docker myself, so um, this was probably a bit rusty, but I hope it helped you out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.